Welcome to Odisha State Open University Management Department. I am Kishore Chandra Padhi. Today's subject is Growth of Indian Entrepreneurship. Who is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneurship has been defined by different social scientists. But there is a unanimity on certain characteristics of entrepreneurs. The first characteristic would be dreaming big. All entrepreneurs dream big. Jamsedji Tata, the pioneer of industrial revolution, thought big. He established steel plant against the entrenched interests, foreign interests. At that time, it was something daunting. It was something challenging. Ghansam Das Birla, another trader, usually traders look to today's profit, he turned industrialist. He wanted long-term profit and growth of the economy. He diversified economy from cement to automobiles to various other sectors of Indian economy. There are entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who have chartered into different fields dreaming big. Dhirubhai Vambani is credited with quality fabric. He started from a fabric and moved, diversified to an empire which ranges from everything, from petrochemicals to gas to entertainment to retail and ever widening. All entrepreneurs dream big. Karsan Bhai Patel dreamt big. He sold his detergent Nirma on cycle and he was fighting the multinational product surf. Multinational product which has many backers, which has strong financial condition and Patel didn't have that capital base. Every one of them dreamt big. There are some social entrepreneurs like Dr. Vargis Kurian, a mechanical engineer turned milkman. He made it. The whole unorganized milkmen were organized into cooperatives. It became the celebrated flood revolution, flood movement in India. India, a milk deficient state, became a major milk producer. Similarly, Narayan Murthy, another pioneer, the founder of Infosys, thought of outsourcing IT business. In those days, it was undreamt of. He dreamt that big thing, started implementing it, and then Infosys became a worldwide name with fastest rate of growth. The growth was so spectacular that others could not match it. 65% growth. Is it a fact that only rich persons or literate persons are entrepreneurs? No. Poor people, Tiffin Wallace in Mumbai became great entrepreneurs. The Dabba Wallace collect Dabbas from home, bring it to the office, give it to the person concerned, come back and again give it back. The whole operation is run for 24 into 6 into 365 with minutes precision. This is cited as a case study that such persons, illiterate persons, not very affluent persons have delivered world standard precision which is known as Six Sigma. The Six Sigma precision is difficult to achieve in Japanese industries. This has been achieved by the Dabawalas in Mumbai. There have been many cases. The son of a Kuli, P.C. Mustafa, he made it big by establishing business with no capital base, with small earnings that he had, he started better 
dosa batter and then made money. He made so much of money that he paid off his debt and is now an established entrepreneur. Women entrepreneurs have done it big with a qualification of brewing Kiran Majumdar saw came to India found no job equivalent to her qualification and started biotech industry and now she is reckoned as biotech queen with this revenue ever increasing revenue she has become an icon in biotechnology field all over the world less affluent Jyoti Reddy was a farm labor, did her studies in schools and universities in distance education mode. After doing the job, she was getting education, moved over to US and is now CEO of a company. And she is now helping all those who are vulnerable sections of population to be like her. She is making entrepreneur industry a flourishing one. She has no, known the hardships. She wants others to get over that hardship right from the beginning. So dreaming big is common feature. Oberoi had 20,000 rupees in his pocket by selling family jewelry. He purchased one hotel in Simla because the hotel owner is migrating abroad, leaving his hotel business to their employees, whosoever wants. And then he became chain owner of 35 hotels, MS Oberoi. He is a household name. He had a dream that no, I shall not only serve in a hotel, I shall own a hotel. All those who dream, think of translating it into action. And when they translate it, it becomes entrepreneurship. The second characteristic of entrepreneurs is innovation. Every entrepreneur has done some innovation. When Jamshedji Tata, the pioneer of industrial revolution in India, established a steel plant, everybody was looking at surprise. Can this Indian steel industry compete with established British and that too during rule of the colonial rule of the British? He fought and made it stand. And irony of ironies, after years, Tata purchased steel plants in the motherland of steel plant, Great Britain. That is possible because he laid the sound foundation stone. Steel is the key to industry. Lenin in Soviet Union would emphasize on electricity as key to growth. Jamsetji in his foresight made steel the bedrock of development. And in Indian five-year plan also, steel became the letter, the benchmark from which economic development starts. Not only steel, Jamsetji also established Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and also Indian Institute of Science because science has to be translated into entrepreneurship, into steel plant. That is how he thought scientific research, steel and application would combine to make it a great industrial operation. He had the foresight 50 years back to think what planners did it later. The first characteristic was dreaming big. Second characteristic was innovation. Third characteristic is that they are all risk takers. No enterprise has been established without taking risk. They take moderate risk, they go through uncertainties, then the enterprise is born. Jamsetji took on well entrenched steel interests by taking risk. The risk was the whole industry may be a flop. 
his capital might have been reduced to zero. He was fighting the great British in colonial days. Dhirubhai Ambani took it further. There was license permit Kota Raj. License has to be there for starting industry. Permit is to be done by government to start industry. In those days, he utilized the same license permit Raj to expand capacities which people thought is madness. People thought with this capacity, how do we sell? But he did not see to today. He saw about not only tomorrow, day after tomorrow. And therefore, he expanded capacity and later on when government of India relaxed, he was the first to cash on it. That is why Reliance industry is at the top now because they utilized the license permit Raj also to benefit themselves. It is a restriction on others. It became a boon for Ambani's. Karsan Bhai also took the same road. When he fought surf without capital base, taking things on a cycle, going from door to door to sell his detergent powder Nirma, he made history by curving the market share of surf, Hindustan liver. Innovation was made that common man wanted cheap detergent, he made it. His influence was so pervasive that surf has to reduce its price, has to come out with cheaper version of detergent for the Indian market, for the lower and middle income segments. All of them took risk and risk not too much, moderate risk. If it is taking too much of risk, then probably you are committing the mistake on the other side. The enterprise may not succeed. If it does not succeed, then you lose entire. If you are taking a moderate risk, this is possible and you are doing incremental risk, then you are an entrepreneur. Narayan Murthy, after education in IIT Kanpur, along with four or five co-founders, established Infosys. He saw business coming that IT sector will be outsourced and he exploited it. That is how Infosys became the greatest IT industry in India until recently. Premji inherited an oil business from his father, but he wanted to do something big, do something different. So, he also went into IT business and become the famous. IT, telecommunication, everywhere they made their entry and made a name. Now, without risk, there is no gain. If you think that let me start get profit right from today when I start industry, then probably it is not possible. It is possible in trade. That you trade, you get profit today itself. But if you are an entrepreneur, you have to risk. Not today, tomorrow. Not tomorrow, maybe day after. And then you have business. To sum up, we have discussed three prominent characteristics of entrepreneurship. One, dreaming big. Two, innovation. Three, taking risk. We will take up the subject, factors affecting entrepreneurial growth in our next session. Thank you.